Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good afternoon, good evening. Today's Monday, Militiaman here. Hey, there's been a few things that I wanted to get with you guys. I know that we had a, um, a, a video yesterday and we talked about some, some great things. Um, but I'd like to remind everybody that there was what we talked about was that ISO 2022 was a migration period for the central banks to um, move on this new functionality of the system. Um, from what I'm understanding, uh, uh, that stuff went really well and uh, it was successful. Um, interestingly enough, though, that was on the 18th, 19th and the 20th. Today's the 20th. So the uh, to leave in, it was successful from what we can see. The um, interesting part was on Sunday, um, the U.S. Department of Treasury with um, uh, Department of Treasury and Federal Reserve Banks together had a joint statement. Janet, uh, Treasury, uh, Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen and uh, the Federal Reserve Board Chairman Jeremy H. Powell got together and they had a little statement on Sunday, which is uh, interesting because it's on a Sunday, everybody's at church or everybody's out surfing, all those good things. But it says, we, we welcome the announcements by the Swiss authorities today to support financial stability. Uh, the capital and liquidity positions of the U.S. banking system are strong. And that U.S. federal, I mean, excuse me, the U.S. financial system is resilient. And we've been in close contact with an international counterparts to support the, uh, their implementation. So... Sunday, I'm thinking to myself, like, well, what do they mean by implementation of what? A lot of questions to be answered. Don't know, but, but ultimately we find out the next day. Um, today, we see that, A, I just got through telling you that the ISO 2022, uh, shout out to Jay Reynolds, by the way, just to FYI. Uh, he's a very big supporter of us. Um, thank you very much. Um, Basically, the coordinated central bank action to enhance the provisions of the U.S. dollar liquidity. They talked about that today. And why? Well, the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, the Swiss National Bank are today announcing a coordinated action to enhance the provisions of liquidity via the standing of the U.S. dollar liquidity swap line arrangements. What's all that mean? Well, it sounds like they all got together to be able to facilitate trade in some shape or manner to keep liquidity globally. Because it sounds like they feel that there's could have been a problem, is a problem. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. Let's pray not that we, everything can be uh, fixed in a quick and easy uh, manner. So we'll see how that turns out. But I'm going to also say that in, in the end, I'm going to get to some th other things with, with respect to Iraq. And um, we're talking about central banks. Um, we talked about a while ago that um, Ali Alak, Central Bank of Iraq, talked about major currencies. Well, we all know that the major currencies of the world are, are part of the SDR basket, that is with the IMF, SDR, Special Drawing Rights. You guys can Google that and look it up. It's pretty simple. But interestingly enough, those major currencies are still all a part of Iraq because they're invested in some shape or form. Um, but the, the point is, is that Iraq is being a, uh, a strong, uh, is coming out in a dynamic manner and suggesting that um, they're going to be a major currency. And what we believe is that that major currency is going to be with the, I, with the AMF, the AMF, uh, not the IMF, but the AMF. And so that they'll be uh, a part of their region. They're going to show some support and some strength. So let's see how that goes. Um, so ultimately... The uh, Ali Alak, the central bank governor, has come out today and he has talked about um, that they have more than 70, 70 trillion dinars outside the banking system for circulation. I, I'm careful on that because if you look up what M1 means, M2 means, and other definitions, you have to be careful on what he says he's not saying any of those terms but he's also but he's saying i believe in in value terms that they have seven seventy trillion uh dinars worth of assets or value out there and so 
be careful on when you when you see that and you read it because it's been, it's out on the news. It's it's been it's in public data today. Um, it's pretty powerful because what I see from him, he, the guy is a very powerful man. He's been around a long time. He's been promoted. He's 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 got he's an expert in anti money laundering. He's um, anti terrorism. All those different things, financing of terrorism. He's he's been around a long time. He started uh, probably I think 2014. Uh, 2015, he initiated spe specific things with having to do with investments and um, and uh, helping out the banking system. The guy's been been around for a while. So what ha what I see today too is that during this time, um, the central banker has worked in conjunction with the Association of Banks um, and the American Agency for Development. I I believe that American Agency Development has an international component to it. And I think I could probably show you that there's an article that specifically uses that term international. So, so when we're talking about what are we doing now, we're going into a marketplace that's going to a private sector. And so when they're, they're, they're massaging all these different things and talking about proudly about that they have capital. I think that uh, the central bank governor, when he says he has 70, tr 70 trillion dinars, he's talking about he's got a lot of money and assets. And that means he can support and defend his currency. That that's my belief. We'll have to see how it turns out, but it's, it, it it really does sound like it's it's, it's going our in our direction. Um, he he comes back. He comes out and basically states that the bank tending, I'm sorry, bank lending represents the cornerstone of the private sector and the banking sector, and uh, with regard to revenues, profits, operations. Um, in the regard to economic activities in all its forms. He's of that mind. He wants to be able to, to do all that. He says the bank lending is, is a key component to that. And what we're looking at here is that the central bank is looking for the private sector to do banking and lending. And that, that's going to facilitate trade throughout the, throughout the country. It's going to facilitate reconstruction, all of those things. Um, he says that... Um, there will be a great focus in this next phase. Well, what would be the next phase? Well, going into a private sector, that's the next phase. So that's what we're expecting and that's what we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna keep our eyes on. Well, so when they're talking about financing of uh, financial small and medium, medium-sized enterprises, they're gonna need to have capital. They're gonna need some investors. They're gonna need all that stuff to come in and help facilitate that. And it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good thing. So, um, some of the things that they, they talk about as far as climate change, clean water, you know, those those things are <laughs> desertification. Those things are going to be part of the things that you're going to read about. But uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm fairly sure they're looking on investment and getting this uh, country rebuilt again. Um, let's see. The uh, OK, but when they're talking about lending, when you have lending, you have to have deposits, okay? So when people bring in money to the bank, it gets stockpiled, if you will, and then they have to lend on it. Yeah, so so at this stage, uh, the banking sector is gonna be able to, um, uh, in itself, assume and provide lending capabilities by bringing deposits through um, financial their financial abilities, okay? So when we see that going forward is that their whole focus is going to be, uh, let's try and do, um, bring in the deposits so that we can we can lend out. And what they've done is, it sounds like Ali Alak has said that they've gotten to that stage where they've got to a threshold of about 70% that they need to bring in more deposits. And so when he is saying that he's got 70 trillion dinar outstanding, he's not necessarily saying he's got 70 trillion physical because they don't have that. They didn't, I believe they don't, they didn't print 70 trillion in cash and coins or anything because they don't even have coins, for instance. So we've got to be careful with the M1, M2 description, but value is the key point that I was trying to get to. He, basically, he's stating this, we will soon work on developing a national strategy for lending. And, and I presented the paper last month when I was outside the central bank. But realizing the importance of bank lending, I presented another paper at a conference at uh, the Mustanasiriya University. And it was based on building rules 
and lending policies for national strategy for lending. When they, when they talk about national, they're talking about themselves, and I, I believe they're talking about outside the country, not just inside. It's a national. It's the country of Iraq talking. Okay, and that's that's how I that's how I see that being. Um, the other few items that I think that um, Alak has been talking about is that um, that there was a very important in that since we're talking about the national issues, it's because of the issue of lending uh, is not only related to the financial capabilities of banks, but it's rather related to the work environment and its regulatory and legal conditions and many factors lie outside the, the banking sector. So it's a joint strategy of the government and uh, other parties. So again, when we see these things happening with, with the, the central bank saying at this stage, being with the lending, um, and uh, deposits, it's important to understand that they have uh, thresholds. You, you can't have too much cash or too little cash to do lending. When you have too much cash, you need to loan it. And that's where they need, that's where it comes for the small businesses, the medium enterprises, all that kind of stuff comes into play. But Allah, Ali Alak says basically, he goes, I wanna shed some light on um, some of the signs that we must focus on in the next stage. Again, he says the next stage. Well, the next stage is, is to me is, is the private sector, which is the ability of banks to, to lend. And it depends on the ability to bring in those deposits. So he keeps reiterating the same fact. The fact is that we have to bring in the money and then we can lend it. If we can lend it, we can rebuild our country. And he's saying he's got the power to do so because he has enough resources. It just needs to be work in a, like a, in a system. And I think that's that's my view on it, but it, it looks it looks really really good. He's um, saying that the indicators, the indicators and the data indicate the banking sector has reached the highest ceiling for lending because the percentage specified according to the instructions of the central bank is seventy percent of deposits, and the banking sector has almost reached this percentage. So that's why he's out here. He's like, we've look, we've we've got to be careful because we've already hit that threshold of 70%. And it says basically what it requires is that there be great efforts to attract more deposits to the banking sector. So that's that's where this guy's going. He's looking towards that next stage, which is to develop the uh, private sector. And so with that, there's a little more on that where it comes down. He keeps, he continues based on the 70 trillion dinars outside the banking system for circulation. Um, very large amount represents a high percentage of the gross domestic product. And so he says that's, that, that's got to be a lot of money because the gross domestic product with, with oil, gas, and all of the uh, income coming from all the income streams from the taxes and tariffs, tourism and all those things, he's basically saying we must focus in the next uh, stage on finding a necessary means to activate deposit movement through several procedures in this regard. So all that income stream that's coming in from all these different places, he needs to loan it out. All that money that's coming in, because if they're activating and they've already activated, it's going to get in, it's going to get intense. That they ha they have a job to do, and so he I think he's what he's saying is, is that he's completed a comprehensive and strategic plan for electronic payments to expand the connection between these funds that lie outside the banking system and their uses which can mean a lot of different things. Uses are just not just one thing. It's many different things. Could be commercial, industrial, residential, um, agricultural. It could be all these different things, which can be large and wide in the event that these funds are attracted to the banking sector. So when all that money starts coming in, they're gonna need, to, they're gonna need a place to put it. That's effectively what I'm getting at. I could be wrong, uh, it's not, it's a little bit outside my expertise, but I'll be be honest. I think that's um, I'm going to be close on that. Um, basically, he's saying the central bank governor has um, wants to be a key partner with the central bank in in that what it will do in terms of providing electronic payment methods on a broad national level. So he's talking about going electronic. So once everything gets up and running, they'll be able to use electronic platforms. They'll be able to understand and see where the money is coming, going, and 
uh, it'll be fast and furious. And we also saw other other things that we talked about yesterday was that the uh, electronic platforms for not only e-government, e-banking, e-finance, e-borders, all those things are, are coming into play. And uh, at this stage of the game, we can't, we can't deny that something's up and these guys are talking because if Alak is talking, um, Al Sudani said, hold your dinar. He says it's going to be worth more. He didn't say worth more than the dollar. He just said it's going to be worth more. And so all these things are coming into play and it's come to push, come to shove. Um, he's looking at basically also establishing a company that is, uh, I would say it's something like the Veterans Administration here or the FHA, Federal Housing, um, Urban Housing Development, is that they're going to do things like that there where they can guarantee loans so that um, the, the uh, um, investors feel a little more comfortable that, um, that people won't default. Well, if they default, they're guaranteed something. So we'll see how that goes. He says uh, that he's commending some of the banks um, that have extended wide networks inside uh, of Iraq, and they're they're working to um, not only spread their 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 um, work with uh, the region, but outside the country. So we'll see how that turns out. I think their their, their plan is is brilliant at this stage of the game. Um, uh, back to the to that company, it's it's basically to reduce the risks in regards to lending and uh, I guess that sectoral growth in credit portfolio loans must be diversified. So when when the countries and businesses and central banks and local banks get too heavily indebted into one particular sector, it's, it's a total risk and he's getting on to that. And the, and the interesting thing is when we come full circle is that why we got here was because of some banking problems in the U.S. Um, we talked about um, the U.S. Treasury Department and the joint conversation about with the Swiss, the Swiss entities to be um, stabilizing the banking system. Well, um, the I Iraq central banker himself today uh, even you know referenced the collapse suffered by the Silicon Valley Bank, and basically what he's saying is that that bank. That bank um, failed because they weren't diversified. And what he's saying is that this Iraq is going to be diversified. They're not going to follow that that uh, you know, that pattern that doesn't quite work. And so as we see that uh, unfold, we're probably going to show that um, these guys are on the right right side of the coin and working in the Iraq's best interests. Let's see the. Uh, it, it, well, basically, at the end, he's basically stating that they want to build a national strategy for bank lending, and uh, it's going to be led by the central bank. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I really do believe that um, what the central bank is doing is uh, is what we expect them to do, um, and they're going to uh, keep pounding the pavement moving forward. It's going to be good. See ya.